When I was researching for my first electric car, one of the things that took me a long time to get my head around was charging. But actually charging an electric car is just like charging a mobile phone. You need a port, you need a cable, and you need a charger. Like phones, there are a few different types of ports, but a couple of general standards. The majority of new cars in Europe now come with this CCS port. It's actually two ports in one, with the top port a Type 2 connector, which enables the car to be charged using AC power at home or from compatible public charging stations. For faster DC charging, two ports combine, enabling you to fit this connector, which you'll find on public charging points. Some manufacturers specify something called a Chadimo port, which you can see here on this charger. It's less popular in Europe, certainly, but it does the same thing, enabling DC power into the car. Just check the spec of the specific model you're interested in if you're unsure. The charging port will lock the cable into place when charging, so you'll have to unlock the car to detach it. And if the car's been unlocked for a while, you might need to press the button on the key fob again to allow the cable to be detached. The car will also not move off if the cable is still connected. And talking of cables, most cars are going to come with two. One is going to have a standard domestic plug on it. The other is going to come with the appropriate connector for your car, in this case, a Type 2. Using the domestic plug cable will be slow. At just over 2 kilowatts, you'll add about 8 miles or 13 kilometers to your range each hour. In comparison, a dedicated home charger delivers about 7 kilowatts, so it will charge at about three times the speed. Just like with phones, some chargers are more powerful than others. Now, in the UK, most home chargers are going to deliver 7 kilowatts every hour to your car. You might be able to get more than that if you have a three phase electricity supply, but you need to check that before you order one. Public chargers are an entirely different beast. They vary from fast to super fast and even ultra fast depending on the provider and location. The general rule when it comes to price is the faster it charges, the more expensive it's gonna be. Ionity's 350 kilowatt chargers cost you around 60 pence per kilowatt, which on my calculation makes your cost per mile more expensive than petrol or diesel. Most public chargers are tethered, which means that the cable is hardwired to the charger, so you just need to pick the right connector. Payment methods differ, with some supporting contactless payment, others using apps, and others requiring special payment cards. Rather than setting up dozens of accounts, just work out which providers are on your most commonly used routes and set up one or two. Worth talking about Tesla here as well. The world's most famous electric car company also has a pretty extensive charging network. Unfortunately, if you didn't buy a car from the big T, you are not gonna be able to use those. If you've got any questions remaining about electric car charging, then drop them in the comments below. And please give the video a thumbs up if you found it useful. You can also subscribe to the channel, EV Does It, and check out some of my other videos, which I'll link to here for more in-depth analysis on electric car ownership. Thanks for watching, happy charging, and see you next time.